Welcome to Film Riot. Before we jump into questions, I wanted to talk about Musicbed. Musicbed isn't sponsoring this episode. Full disclosure, I am partnered with them, and I do have an affiliate link with them, which hopefully, if you dig it, you'll use that affiliate link because it does help us out. Link for that in the notes below. But what I wanted to talk about is their subscription service. We've talked about it before, but I am just in love with it, and it really is excellent for people like us who are doing stuff on YouTube, especially if you're doing it on a consistent basis, but even if you're not now, which is one of the things I wanted to talk about. First of all, now they have a 30-day free trial. So if you wanted to try this out, you can get 30 days free and see if you like it before you dive in and start spending money. But now they also have annual and monthly subscriptions. So you could use this on a project by project basis. So instead of having to have this for a full year locked into that contract, if you're just doing projects spaced out like a lot of people do, you can get it for that month, use it for that project, and then cancel it. But for people like me who are doing things constantly, that yearly subscription makes a lot of sense because it is a bit cheaper. But if you jump over to pricing, what's craziest about this is that their YouTube and social plan is $9 a month. $9 a month for as much licensed music as you want. And the best part about it is how it's connected to YouTube. So several times uh, music has been flagged on our videos, which will strip the monetization off the videos, and that can be a real pain in the ass. But with Musicbed, it clears it right away because everything's connected. So a few times before I even got an email from YouTube letting me know that a song in the episode was flagged, I got an email from Musicbed saying that they caught it already and they released it and everything was good to go. So again, it's nine bucks a month. You can do the annual or the monthly. You got the 30 day free trial now. And like I said before, we do have the affiliate link. So if you do want to use this, check out the link below that will definitely help us out and help us keep doing the show. But definitely check this out either way. It's one of my favorites for licensed music. It's just so easy to use. One of the cheapest by far, and they have such great quality music, especially when it comes to artist-based music, which I have a playlist for a bunch of 80s style tracks that I really love off this site, which you can also find below. So check that out. And now, questions. When filming slash shooting, what are the key things that help you and the group work efficiently? Communication. I've said it a bunch before. Communication is 100% the most important thing on set across the board. Whether you're a director trying to convey what you want for the scene to get what you want, everybody in your team needs to understand the vision that you have in your head so they can help you achieve that vision. But even on a personal level, when you might have some kind of conflict or just, you know, people are butting heads, some drama flares up, it always happens. But having that open and honest communication will really help curb that either just keep it from happening altogether, at least to some degree, or curb it from getting much worse. The, the, the less things are communicated, the more that pot boils. You know, it's human nature. So just communication across the board is the most important thing. What are your favorite pastimes and hobbies? What should you do for fun? The most obvious answer is watching films. I love watching movies, obviously, as we all do. But uh, less obvious stuff is I love photography, music, and uh, video games. I really love me some video games. Although I don't always have time to play them, I've been trying to make more time for it now. And now I have the Nintendo to switch, which has made it a lot easier to be able to play them because it goes wherever you go so I can play it better, whatever it is. And I have Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm a huge Zelda fan. And I personally think Breath of the Wild is the best Zelda game yet. It is glorious. But I've noticed that uh, playing games shuts my brain off in a totally different way and lets me relax in a totally different way than watching films. Does. Because when we watch films, all of us, I mean, I'm sure all of you can relate with this. If the movie's bad enough or good enough, you start dissecting it and analyzing it. So your brain doesn't really fully shut off. It's working still in that way that you're used to working on a daily basis. But with video games, it, it shuts all that off. I'm not thinking in those ways. So it's like relaxing and energizing in a totally different and very useful way I found. So I've been trying to make a little bit more time for that. What do you look for when creating or finding music for your films? Something that evokes the tone that I'm feeling. Like I, you know, you can't, sometimes you can't even express it fully, but you can feel the thing that you want or you can see it in your head, but you can't really articulate it yet. And, and music does such a great job in that. And even some imagery that you can find online. Sometimes it's just a matter of things that I 
think this might be the tone and going and finding it and it's, this doesn't feel right and you, you you just keep going process of elimination until you find the one and it's just yes that's it and it just clicks uh so usually it's just a process of discovery that i'm just hunting down the thing that clicks and i just feel it that this is the correct tone and a lot of times that shifts over time you know it's the same as writing you start writing a certain thing but it evolves as the story evolves even the look evolves like originally what i thought it was going to look like you know it's similar but it's a little bit different in the end because it's all evolving with where the story goes every hand you know every voice that gets placed on this thing it it shifts a little bit it all ends up in the same place and saying the same thing you wanted to, but you have to stay flexible to let it all evolve as the whole project does. How did you learn the business side of your company? Classes, trial and error, mafia controlled, secret genetically enhanced monkeys? It depends on exactly what you're talking about. I do have my brother, Tim, who has helped me on the business side of things since square one, and he's a genius with that stuff. But I also worked in the corporate environment and was very interested in figuring out how all of that worked. And, and that definitely taught me a lot. And I would say the majority of it is just trial and error, just figuring things out as you go. We, we were connected with Rev3 for a while, so I got to learn a lot from them with you know, dealing with clients and dealing with uh, different brands and stuff like that. But more than anything, it was just, you know, we've been at this for over 10 years, uh, 10 years for Film Riot almost, but overall I've been at this for over 10 years. So it's just that doing and learning from what you did wrong and what you did right, and then continuing on. Any tips for actors? Is there anything that we might do that drives directors crazy? The same thing that drives editors editors crazy and that's a lack of continuity when you're doing something different every single time without fail that is maddening because there's no way I'm going to be able to cut that or stepping on the lines of someone else in the scene because now I, I can't cut that either so making sure that you're not stepping over each other's lines and that unless that's specifically what we're wanting for the scene and making sure that if you pick up the cup on this specific line you pick up the cup on that line every single time it's a difficult thing but it's so mandatory when it comes to the editing process. Hey Ryan, what do you think of the Oscars in general and this year's nominees? I don't really think it's super useful for me to comment on the nominees because that's such a subjective thing. Uh, and I mean, you, you know, we even know every, it's very well known that uh, people even campaign to be nominated to begin with. So it's such a weird thing altogether. But I mean, I could even say a bunch of movies that I think should be nominated for best picture or best people that should be best actor or best director. And you might think I'm crazy because again, art is such a personal and subjective experience. So it's not going to click the same way for all of us. I mean, a lot of us will agree, but that's not across the board. But I, I think overall, the Oscars has lost lost its way, lost its, you know, what the whole point of it is. It's supposed to be this love of film, this celebration of the art form of film, this thing yearly that just inspires all of us, especially the younger filmmakers. I mean, I remember seeing it when I was a little kid and just looking at it in awe. And But it, now it just seems very much less that for the past like five, six years. It just feels very cynical and that it, they completely lost the point of the thing. And I, and I think that's represented very well in how they almost got rid of the cinematography and editing and makeup. Um, and now, thankfully, they reversed that. But, I, you know, that's another clear indication that they've sort of lost the way and what the whole point of this thing is supposed to be. I'm not a huge fan of award shows in general. I mean, I think Drake said it on, I don't know, was it the Grammys or something? And I find myself agreeing with him, which is odd. But he he was saying it's, you know, it's a popularity contest and it doesn't really mean anything. And I, I agree with that. If, if we could get rid of that and instead do this yearly just celebration of film, I would be all in favor of that. But I, what it's become, I'm not the biggest fan of. I still watch because I just love me some movies. But, you know, I I think it, there definitely needs to be some changes and finding its way back to just the love and celebration of the art form of film. Why did you decide to call Film Riot Film Riot? Why didn't you just call it Trying Films? Because Trying Films is my production company that produces Film Riot. Film Riot is a show made by Trying Films. Under Trying Films, we also have our show Variant. We used to do a show called Film State. Uh, we did uh, a very short run series called Pimp Your Production. We do short films. We're leaning towards features. We do a podcast. So there's a lot of things underneath the company. That's like, you know, a movie under Warner Brothers being called Warner Brothers. That would, that would not be a thing. So Trying is the production company. Film Riot is uh, the show underneath that production company, or I guess a brand underneath that production company. And we came up with the name by going through a bunch of really bad ideas and finally being like, hey, what about Film Riot? Yeah, that works. 
Okay, cool. And then it was called Film Riot. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. And this is another filmmaking YouTube channel, which is called Cinecom. Very creative. They do a lot of really fun things. Very talented group of guys. So definitely go and check that out. Until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Mm -hmm.